All I want to say is that financially empower your daughters. All I want to say is let them study. Let them do the STEM courses, the lawyer courses, the journalism courses. Let them come home late at night and move cities. Let them, you know, ditch the ring or wear the ring. It doesn't matter. But let them go after their dreams because marriage is no guarantee. Neither is motherhood. And the identity of a woman, which I think a conclave like this shows, is to a large extent us standing shoulder to shoulder with men. We are talking about 50%. First, I would say, let's talk about sensitization of the mind. Everything else will happen after that. You know, we still think about it in our offices. The biggest celebration is still shadi and birthdays. Does an HR ever celebrate a woman's divorce? Does an HR ever celebrate a, a widow's son getting a job and she being the mother who really raised that child? Does, I, I know some offices, of course, give leaves to, you know, women who are going through IVF. But do you look at an adopted mother in the same way as you look at a natural mother? I've been, you know, by a female boss. So much of work used to be dumped on me in, uh, you know, when I was an editor in Delhi. And the common refrain was, Tere ghar mein kaun wait karta hai? As if you go and make roti for anybody. I've interviewed CEOs, Shirin, you might agree to this, who said, once we go back home, it's still those questions. Mom, how was the why didn't you come for the parent-teacher meeting? Why was the tiffin the same? We are still stuck in the same gender roles and the same stereotypes. It's my dream that today this huge community of single women who comprise 39% of India's female population and the figure that you quoted, which is over seven crores, mind you, is the census which was done over a decade ago. Thanks to the COVID, we've not even had a census. Can you imagine if the census is done today? We've already beaten China. We're probably number one. And these single women are not failures. These single women are not women who didn't get married because they are ugly, fat, overqualified, mufat, aggressive, ambitious. These brave women walked out of marriages. They were supported by families who might not have money but they had big hearts, like one of the wonderful speakers like you had. And uh, I must tell you this, I get very emotional talking about parents calling me up. Just as I was coming to your venue, I got a call from an 82-year-old father. Both his daughters are victims of domestic abuse, and they've walked out of very, very violent marriages, fighting for the custody of their children. And he asked me, Shri, can they join? One of them is in Delhi. The other of them is with me in Hyderabad. Can they join your community? Will there be any stigma? And if you don't mind, may I bring my sister? She became a widow when she was only 25. And everybody in the family just gave her housework to do. And she felt she had to do housework and help raise our children to survive in the family household as a useful candidate in the family. It was such an emotional moment for me because I said, Uncle, we have days when our community members invite their parents. So many of them are just scared and worried. They've been criticized. They've been bullied. They've been harassed by their relatives. They've accompanied their, par you know, their children to courts. They've stood by the funeral pyre of their children's husbands sometimes. And they've you know, pushed the wheelchair of their children. I wanted to tell Dr. Reddy about how I was persecuted in a plush hospital when I checked in to the emergency. And the name Status Single, which is today such a movement, BBC is making a documentary on me and my community, because I was asked, what is your status? If you see, every form has got this, you know, Status Single. And I was literally penalized while being on an oxygen mask. Why you have come alone? Even today in a hospital, you need the next of kin. You must have heard that term. And the next of kin is usually your spouse or your parent or your child. That's the biggest fear of women. Who will take us to the hospital? I don't want to die alone. I want to remove that fear from every mother's heart. I want to remove that fear from every woman's heart. I have felt that fear at times when my relationship hasn't worked out. I was dumped unceremoniously just a week before my engagement when I was 24 years old. But thanks to that, I moved to Bombay and the word editor got added to my CV. So I'm bloody proud. But 
I have been through those situations where you're alone, where you don't have anybody, where I've worried, you know, I'm the only child, I'm 45, I'm diabetic, I have PCOD. What happens to me after my parents? But I dream of a world of equality. I dream of a world where channels will come forward and look at sponsoring. I'm using that word consciously. Yes, put their money, put their bang with the buck and look at single women not as a niche, Single women, 75 million guys, we've overtaken China, we've also probably overtaken US. What a testimonial to new age Indian women who are even ditching the boogie trap of wanting a man to have a child. I have women, a cancer survivor, she has frozen her eggs, now she's cancer free and she is going to have a baby through IVF. She says, I don't want to settle just to settle down. That's the woman of India. That's the woman of the 21st century. I hope we foster, my sister is only 14, a dream of a world where if she somehow doesn't find a partner or if that marriage or relationship doesn't work out, she's not looked at a, you know, as a failure or a basket case. She becomes an entrepreneur. She wants to be a chef and open a cafe. She, you know, explores her sexuality. She becomes whoever she dreams to be. I want to tell Indian parents, please stop pressurizing your daughters for marriage. Think of them as people. Think of them as equals to your sons. I know in a, in a room like this, you might be saying, oh, but we, are, you know, we don't belong to this family. But the, the, you know, the gender parity at work, and like I said, the first thing corporates have to do is gender sensitization. First, the change has to happen here, here, and then in boardrooms and in offices. So I want to congratulate, you know, CNBC for this brilliant initiative. Thank you, Shireen, for giving me the platform. May I proudly say that you are a sister of the sisterhood and you've shown like so many women that if you're good at your work and if you're, you know, your face is on the billboards in the country to hell, if you know, you are still, or maybe up till now, status single.